Welcome to another episode of Open Relationship Podcast, where we have an open and honest conversation about everything from A to Z as it pertains to the LGBTQ plus community and beyond. I'm your host, Rodney. I'm Devin. Tay. And I'm Solomon. And we are going to have a good show. But first, before we want to say we had another, look, another milestone, guys. <laughs> we have 100 subscribers. Shout out to you, openers. We love you. Yes. Keep subscribing yes. and keep Thank doing you. what you're doing. And let's get into our week. Are we still calling them openers? Yes, we are. Oh, Devin, how's your yeah, week? We didn't rename it yet. How's oh. your week? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't changing it. Oh, I haven't let that one go. Uh, my week has been good so far. Uh, I'm excited to go home tomorrow, so I'm going to Maryland. Uh, my youngest niece's first birthday is Friday, mm -hmm. um, and her party's in New Jersey, so we're going to be traveling there. So I'm excited. I'm excited you to get you some while you're there. We'll see. It depends who's, who's who and who's what when I Ain't get that home. Person to, is that person there from last week you told us about? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, y'all know? Oh, the, uh, Do y'all know? Yeah. Yeah, from last week. I don't know week. what you're talking about. Oh, he must be. That's a yes. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> He's waiting on that day. So anyway, um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm excited. Father's Day this weekend, so I'm excited to um, spend that with my grandfather. Y'all know my dad passed away. Oh. So it's um a little bit of like mixed emotions, and I think mm -hmm. like going home just brings back memories of obviously mm. you know my dad so it's gonna be a little bit bittersweet but i'm excited overall so yeah it's always good to nice. see family yeah hey man tell you how was your week Chum. <laughs> Chum. <laughs> this week has been a drag i'm not even gonna lie um i'm on a new project at work and the training that i got on it was just absolutely ridiculous like it's Sounds so unorganized like unorganized like and they just threw me to the sharks like really like today was my first day actually speaking with the physicians and stuff and like I sounded so stupid on the phone. Like I felt stupid. Like really stupid. Oh. Like I was so annoyed. I went up on the supervisor and everybody. Oh God. So are you gonna <laughs> reach out to them and get like clarity or tell them like listen, I need so more training? When I talked to my supervisor, of course they were just letting us like again, it's not them, it's the client that okay. we work for. So basically the client felt like we only needed um like three days of training or whatever. Now Remind you, we're scheduling now. We're actually scheduling directly for the physicians. Mm -hmm. So when the you know patients call in or whatever, we have to schedule their appointments and right. stuff. Now you give us three days to learn learn the system, and not only that, you have to go over like all the guys versus like you got to learn the doctor, learn their schedule with their protocols in, and all that, and be ready to take those calls. Like oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, y'all need more training. Exactly. Like, <laughs> you better pull a Devin like he did for said sponsor. Devin said, what you not going to do is <laughs> trip me out. Right. When I tell you I hit the blunt so hard today, <laughs> I was at work. I, I was know. so high. Cause you had to eat your mind? I had to. <laughs> My nerves are so bad. You had but. another good week, too. You got some good jug? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell okay, y'all ain't gonna tell me yes, shit. Yes, like the other day, y'all. Right. Loose slip, sink shit. I was super drained though. Like the yeah, day, right. like oh my god, I'm glad that the day had started today for the new position mm -hmm. instead of yesterday. Because child, it wouldn't work. Like I was walking around sluggish. I was yeah. laying across the bed. Like every time I call, I had to get up out of bed and take the call because. I was out of there, baby. Put it down. Like, oh, <laughs> if he put I know it down, that's you right. should be happy. <laughs> no, I was tired. He woke mm. me up at five thirty in the morning. Oh, like, yes, <laughs> that's the best. I think morning sex is the best. Yeah, sex. but I love morning perky? sex. But I love tired. morning sex. What you say? Don't you be perky or? Um, <laughs> I get perky because then it's like, okay, like yeah, I'm ready now. Like, well, now I can get in the shower. Now I can get dressed for work. It's about to be a good day. <laughs> Child, I was oh, tired. So, man, you leave it in you. <laughs> you know what? Don't answer. <laughs> I wasn't going to say. Right. Solomon, how was your week? We'll reading? let that be a mystery. <laughs> uh, to crap but we can talk about that after the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my week has actually been pretty good. Um, nothing big this week. Mm. So, you know, my dad is in town. My uncle's in town. My uncle Solomon is here from New York. So I'll be seeing him this week and um, spending Father's Day maybe with the both of them. Oh, that's oh, exciting. That is beautiful. Yeah, so you're named after your uncle. I'm named after my uncle. My brother's named after my dad. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. That's so are y'all going to the strip club or what are y'all doing? Um, <laughs> probably just eating, putting out, spending family time. We we not as not so much. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> I know my dad want to see. He want to be what he's. My dad would definitely <laughs> love the show. Where well, Magic yeah. City <laughs> with his teeth falling out of his mouth. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, daddy. <laughs> you done? I'm you. done. Okay. Well, you guys, if you see how I look, I look how I feel. Um, I feel horrible. Work is stressing me out, 
And then, you know, work is just really stressing me out, and I'm currently looking because what we're not going to do oh. is keep doing this. Right, right. It's a lot. So you're off air. And then a person who watched the show, I will say this because I want to talk this before y'all, had a dash to jump in my G- DM and say, I am not for gay people. And I, I was like, elaborate why you feel like I'm not for gay people. He said, so he said some conversation that we had, I didn't agree with somebody. And I'm like, I don't care if I'm, I'm black and I'm gay. If you wrong, you wrong. Right, right. right. Like, at the end of the day, I feel like even with this situation going on with um, 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 God Club King, King, mm-hmm. God King, Club King, what's his name? Club Guy. He got um, a song. I love his song. Mm-hmm. And then, like, basically, make a long story short, that a gay person kept getting on stage trying to twerk at a straight oh, event. Oh, I did oh, see that on the B King, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, like, like I feel, I, I literally said, like, well, I feel like that's wrong. That's their set. Mm-hmm. They can say what they want on their set. Right. You know, people do clickbait, clickbait clips. They only show what you want to see. Exactly. Right. If you watch the whole thing, you see they try to get the boy off multiple times, and they was like, well, he needs to be canceled, and and blah 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 blah. Then saying, and I was like, well, no, he need to be canceled because that's his stage. Right. Why we have to put it if he ain't gay. Yeah, I feel like if they asked him multiple times to stop and he didn't, then that's what security's for. But again, I only saw the clip of him getting pushed, so yeah. I felt like that was their first reaction. So if it wasn't, then I agree with you. If it wasn't their first reaction, because they just don't want that. Like, like I feel like twerking is appropriate. I love to twerk, but yeah. I'm not going to be in the middle of a straight club or, you know, at like a bar, a straight bar or somewhere like that yeah. and just be twerking. Like, you know, not that I would feel uncomfortable, but just certain it's places and certain things. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's a time and place for everything. It is. It is. Great. Yeah, that's all I have. But fuck you. you know who you are. <laughs> so uh, how the conversation? I was about to say, like, what was the I response? just thought I said, read my resume, bitch. I don't argue <laughs> if I don't know. And I got I got certificates and a trophy for being for the community. Yes. Oh, so he was saying that you weren't in support of the community because of your From view of that From the house city in Georgia. Thank that you. That is crazy. State representative. You know who you are. I don't want to say your name. Oh. So Google me, bitch. Oh, God. All right. Well, on that note, as you sip, we're going to move right along to our sponsor for today. And we are sponsored by Oliver Winery and Vineyards. So as you can see the bottle. So this one is a blueberry Moscato. And I have to read what it says on there. It says a tropical Moscato brightened by light, fresh blueberry juice. So I love like a good something that pairs with something. So like a good drink with some fruit or, you know, a a fruit juice or even liquor with some fruit in it. Um, So let's taste it and see what y'all think. It's it's really delish. Is it really? It is. Because you said earlier. Mm -hmm. That you were unsure. And I love it. (laughs) Okay. Just want you to be sure about it. Uh, But yeah, so guys, definitely go grab you a bottle. They actually invited us also to the vineyard in Indiana. Nice. Okay. So that might be you like try to throw me out. Like I won't get my ticket in my plane. No, anymore. we're all gonna go. That would be a cute trip, so we can all go. So thank you, Oliver. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank so you. So before you put that back, let's, let's oh, get a little more. You want to top off? Yeah. Tell you what, no, go just start so your segment. You don't gotta wait on us. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So on Pillow Talk today with Tay. Um, so I wanted to know, like, speak to you guys and see what y'all felt about like all the drama that's unfolding with the um, Bad Boys franchise. Now, y'all know that the season literally just ended, and um, they were actually casting for a season two in Houston um, right. this past weekend. Right. Um, so one of my best friends actually went to audition, mm-hmm. and, you know, I'm following the whole thing that whole day, that whole Saturday, trying to see, like, what's going on. So they people were literally there from, like, dawn up until, like, 12 midnight, like, trying to audition. And mm. I saw some of the auditions. Like, first of all, the judges were people that were on the first season, mm-hmm. and they belittled those people. Like, the people that were auditioned, like, they really made them feel, like, horrible. Like, you know, they'll get up there. One guy, I think he just walked up there, and they was like, girl, bye. Like, what? he didn't even say, he didn't get a chance to say anything. So I was watching some of the audition. I was just like, wow, y'all really just did this to, like, make people feel bad. In my opinion. So come to find out that before the even audition had was even um, done, they had already picked a new cast. So they wasted all those people's time going up there, standing in line all day long to audition for the show when they already got the pad, the cast already yeah, picked I feel like they do season. that just to keep the hype of it, like make it seem like do we're giving people a chance. they charge money for auditions? No, it's free. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. But it's like, you got to th- think about it. Some people like actually 
flew to Houston, drove mm-hmm. to Houston just for these auditions. And they and were stuff. fighting. Like that, the, and they were I was fighting. Like, you doing Pride Month. They, they, was, the, they were like, fighting. fighting at the Damn, audition. Like, like, even the judges was fighting some of the uh, people that was auditioning. But it's just weird that they that would be little strange, people. Honestly. Like, Thank you're you. literally being paid to film and fight. So it's like, how are you belittling people that are coming to just do nothing but be involved in drama? You know what I mean? Like, what what is the standard that when you I say need be to have little, be little, Zeus is yeah. trash. Like, yeah, like, I, I hate I to agree. say that. I love I love my Ratchet TV though, because he like the baddies. I like the baddies. <laughs> um, I do like Bad Boys LA. I love Jocelyn's Cabaret. I love Lamel. I think that's his name. He's like the mm-hmm. owner of Zeus or whatever. He's so beautiful. Like Zeus is like don't get me wrong. Like it's entertaining <laughs> because you know people like drama, hey, they like reality. <laughs> but in the same instance, like why would you? Why would y'all hold an audition knowing that y'all already picked the case? Like, y'all wasted people's time. Not only that, like I said, people flew to Houston for that. Like, you know what I'm saying? My best friend, he actually auditioned, and he got to the second round just for them to tell him, like, oh, no, thank you. You know, we've already picked someone else. Like, I just think that was just... I guess to like build up the suspense of the new season mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, Mulan is also doing his own bad boys um here in Atlanta, which is the auditions actually this Friday. He charged a four nine nine. And he was like shading like the you know original audition and stuff. I do not like him. I do not I don't like him either, but what I will say is that looking at the way that he's trying to um do his own bad boys and stuff that Did you see his show that's already on there with his comic? What show? (laughs) Bitch, it's a fucking mess. And I'm s I'm not sorry. Cause that (laughs) bitch is so fucking rude and nasty to everyone. Exactly. And you put that trash ass wannabe Marvel Avengers. (laughs) No, I have to look this up. Where's it on YouTube? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was not even gonna bring that up. Uh, is this on YouTube? He always try to read some. It's on his network. It's on his network. It's four ninety nine to. I can't. He has a network. I can't four ninety nine. Yeah, that's what his show's been. But I want to watch the show. But I, I wanted to literally laugh, and I laughed. If he can oh. get a network, we can definitely get a network. Right. Girl, anybody can. <laughs> <laughs> no shade, but yeah. well, them, yeah, shade. Well shade. Them dick toys may not be doing so. <laughs> And the, I think he has like an ass molding too. I yeah, he, he has the ass molding with the hole. He has the mm-hmm. um, he has the dildo. Have you tried any of his products? No, God no. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I would support him like that. Like, mm-hmm. do you use toys in your relationship? Yeah, like, do you all use toys? Okay, I, keeps it yeah, like we, we use toys. Mm-hmm. I have a whole collection of toys. Like, oh wow, little chest. Okay. <laughs> I was like, you can't do birds, yeah. <laughs> right? You got a toy box. Well, I like yeah, because every time I would go to the, like to the sex store or something, I would always have to buy some. Like, I always have to buy something to go to the sex store. Like, always. I That's a young one. Let's all go together. They go on your head. The what? It's like a little egg thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? I love mm-hmm. that toy. It's an egg thing. Yeah, just I guess down your shaft. Yeah. If you are really sensitive and you like to be touched up, some people are ticklish. But right. I love to be touched up there on the uh-huh. head of my penis. Uh-huh. I can say penis, right? Yeah. 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 As long as you yeah. don't say the D word, I yeah. feel like penis is clear. We didn't say words than that. Did we say it? I say yes. bitch and hoe. I don't say vulgar, vulgar. Yeah, word. I feel like D is vulgar. Like, bitch ain't vulgar, I don't think. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, you put on the head of your penis and you, it feels wonderful. Uh, we should go to the sex store. And, and I have a flashlight. I had that before. Yeah, I had that before. I've been recording yeah. myself. I'm like, oh, look at that ass and balls. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. So you just send in the news or you just keep mm-hmm. You send them or you just keep them in your phone? They're a private collection. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. everybody has their own little private collection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't. Am I, like, whack for that? Yes. You don't have Like, a somebody now, asked huh? me for a picture, like, the you, other day, and I'm like. You just on Twitter. Yeah. Well, back on Twitter. Oh, well. Technically, I only created a profile, but. Y'all, is that dry? Like, to not have a I mean, I have, I have, you know, I take pictures and stuff. Like, I send them to my man all the time. So, that's when he at work. I like to <laughs> picture when I'm waxed down there. When yeah. I look good. I can see my... Every, Everything, I exactly. I am like, that shit look good. <laughs> I yes, I have, I have a fresh wax like, as I, we speak. If I want to start all the fans, I should. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love my body with the wax. So yeah, I, I mean, I think it's good. And my, like my fiance, he sends me pictures all the time, especially yeah. when I'm filming. Like, every time yeah. I look yes. at that phone, I'm like, oh shit, time to go. Yes. <laughs> what you got waiting on you when you get home? Girl, why you filming? Yeah. That's a little trashy. How is that trashy? <laughs> Give me something to look forward Let to. Let me know home. to bring my ass straight home. After Thank the show. you. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I, it. Not, I would not be working with y'all and looking at a dick or ass pic on set on camera. Set. If my phone goes off before you we start filming be and I look at it, you just had a full FaceTime phone call. Did you get it on, on camera? Set. No, that's why exactly. I said before we start filming. You, don't get, you, you gotta slow down. You gotta slow down. Okay. I said before we start filming. <laughs> 
Well, let's be clear. You said during. I don't, I don't look at my phone during well, filming and look at it. I see it when I'm finished, out. and it means it's time to go home. Mm. <laughs> That's not what you said. But I, I oh like I word. like anticipation. Like if I'm at work, definitely send me it a pic. Nice. It's like ooh, it is nice. it's exciting. It's like ooh. Nah, at work I love him. I walk yeah. Oh yeah, like, he sent me something like he at work too. I'm like, dude, <laughs> this nasty. one boy took this picture. Like, okay, let's just subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you got a couch, right? Right. And he linked his <laughs> lift his leg up on a couch. So one foot on the ground foot on the couch. And okay. he has a nice penis. Uh-huh. And so like, I like to see boys jerk backwards. What do you mean? But you can see the back view. Oh, okay, okay. Because you like both. He knows. Right. So I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's right. <laughs> is, he a, is he a keeper? He just a sexter. Okay. Nothing more than that. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Yeah. See, so I never did anything. Yeah, we well, yes, have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I love the gestures that, the, you, that you do. <laughs> You're like, it's just a sexter. I don't swallow though, but I. (laughs) When you get married, you don't think you'll swallow when you get married? Hell, I'm not ever swallowing. Is it the texture or what is it? It just don't taste right to me. Really? But you have swallowed? No. Oh, you just tasted it and it was like, uh uh. So do you spit it? It be, you know, this part where you can get to the middle part? Mm -hmm. I feel right, y'all. I went, ooh, yeah. And I (laughs) Like, I try to make you feel good, but I be literally gagging. Right. Like, get this oh shit Oh, my God. Out. Really? That's, oh, I don't know. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well, at least you're, oh, it doesn't clean your teeth. Your teeth is very white. <laughs> <laughs> Thank my dentist. Um, but I don't think it tastes bad. Like, I I don't know. I, yeah, I don't think it tastes bad either. And I, I, don't, I feel bad. like that, like, turns your partner on more when they know that you're going to swallow it, from what I've heard. It's just turn you on as you're having sex with me, love. I have good sex. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> I like that. I do. Right, I heard that. You, you wear the bottle swallow, bitch. You wear not my <laughs> <laughs> um, Or you could do it all. You can have good sex and you can swallow. That's all. You need for the girls like you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't swallow everybody, though. <laughs> I had to add that disclaimer. <laughs> We might need a new transition going into your next topic. We might need a bell so Mo can just ring the bell if you start talking about sex too much. Okay, <laughs> like, Ari, I done said just clean it. Yeah, so. Yeah, we got Ray off topic. <laughs> we did. Um. So the other part of the segment that I wanted to do, I wanted us to like <laughs> share a little short moment that we all can like have with our fathers, considering mm-hmm. that Father's Day is coming this week. Yeah, happy Father's Day to all the fathers <laughs> yes, out Happy there. Father's Day. Um, I guess I'll go. I love my daddy. Um, yeah. It makes me get emotional. Like, oh, we get emotional. I am. I'm going to cry because okay. I, I, I love my daddy. Because you got a good dad. Uh, and like this... You know, sometimes like kids, we don't understand why our parents work so much. So, like, mm-hmm. I live somebody that go to work at home. He might go out like probably once every four years, but mm-hmm. like he was working home. And a lot of times he missed a lot of things for me. But when I say I said anything I wanted, like my daddy gave it to me. Right. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he wasn't a hugger type of father. Um, but he was but I knew he loved us. Like the way he cared for us, the right, he did right. for us. We did have Father and Son Day, like we used to go Look at battle. He loved battleships and things, and we just buy train oh, sets so and, and play. Then we play thing called Robot Dad. Mm-hmm. Oh. We used to get on the cover with our dad. He's like, I'm Robot Dad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's just, I just, you know, I just, you think it's silly now as you get older. You just appreciate, and I love you, Daddy. You know, we don't see eye to eye all the time. Oh, My child, we oh. don't, but I love you. Oh, that was sweet. That was really sweet. Yeah. Oh, my daddy. That was sweet. <laughs> I like the emotional Rodney better. <laughs> you see, though I say daddy, I ain't gonna, <laughs> I say daddy, I ain't gonna call him my daddy. Because <laughs> you ain't my daddy. <laughs> what about you, Devin? Next? Oh, you want me to go next? Yeah. I knew you were going to say, what about me, Devin? Um, I have a lot of memories with my dad. I feel like um, I, I've done a lot of reflection now that he's passed away Mm -hmm. and just like analyzing like our relationship feeling like there was a point where 
I kind of compared my dad to all the other dads because for a while he, uh, my dad did some jail time, so he was like not around for like a good period of time. Mm -hmm. um, so I just would compare like him to all the other dads, you know, like other people had their dads pick them up all the time and like, you know, whatever. So I felt like, you know, like I want, I want you here, I want you to be here. Um, but when he was around, like he was amazing. Like when he, you know, got himself together, came home from jail. Mm -hmm. I mean, even most recently, uh, before he passed away, he was, I think he was in Atlanta with me for like three months. And he was staying in my apartment with my youngest brother and I when we lived together. Um, so it was amazing. I really just thank God for that time of just like allowing us, because he was still living in Maryland originally. Mm -hmm. So for, you know, God to just orchestrate for him to be here for a couple months and just be around us. Um, so I never forget, I took him to the airport. I think it was like the day before Memorial Day. Um, and that was my last time seeing him. And I remember we hugged. And then um, we talked on the phone the day before Father's Day. He was out with his friends. Like, you know, he was obviously having a good time. And then, you know, the next morning, like, we kept calling, like, to wish him happy Father's Day. Um, he wasn't answering the phone. So we're like, okay, he probably just stayed out late, you know, whatever. He's busy. Mm -hmm. um, so we just didn't think anything of it. So it probably, like, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, my sister called my other sister. And I remember we were at the gas station. And, like, we were getting ready to get a few drinks. And just, like, even though we weren't celebrating with my dad, we were going to celebrate for him, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so my sister's just like, what? And then she just, like, cr she's crying. Like, she's not talking. She's crying. So I'm like, what's wrong? So she's like, daddy died. Daddy passed away. And it's like, and I literally froze. Like, I'm like, you know, like, I didn't know what to do, you know. And I really, like, feel and empathize for other people that have lost parents, you know, because mm -hmm. obviously this is my first time experiencing it. And it's, uh, it's crazy. Like, we have good days. We have bad days. Like, sometimes, like, in the middle of nowhere, I'll just think about my dad. Some days I'll be good. But then if I see, like, a father and son, then I'm like, wow, like, these are moments that I'll never have again. Like, we'll never talk. Like, you know, I, I always strive to, like, make my parents proud of me. And that was, like, motivation to keep, like, doing the right thing, keep, mm -hmm. you know, going upward career-wise. And I just wanted to make him more proud, you know, and really just, like, give him a life that he that I think that he deserved, you know, um, so it was cut short. But the good memories definitely outweigh the bad, and um, I miss him a lot. So y'all pray for me, viewers. Y'all pray for me. Um, this weekend will be a little bit tough, but you know yeah. we'll make but it. He did, he didn't even shed a tear. So that's mm -hmm. but he's like he's yeah, about just, to though. No, when I, like, if I look up, it helps. Like I just go like, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Then like, the point where you can talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Sometimes, like sometimes I do cry when I talk about it, yeah. and then sometimes I don't. So it really just it's weird, like because it it just depends. Like I literally have no control over it as much as I try to. If that makes sense. Grieving is okay. okay. Yeah. I tell people yeah. cry. We'll definitely check on you this weekend. Thank sure you. Okay. I appreciate I'll send you a dick pic from. <laughs> <laughs> You want dark skin or light? Not dark skin, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And just like that, Rodney snapped his right out of it. Oh my god! What about you, Solomon? Um, my child, I absolutely love my childhood with my dad. Okay. Um, he is my hero. He he really oh. is. He uh, showed me how to be a man. Like, Right. Um, in every sense of the word and the I think the most valuable moment that I have was recently we went to go um, well I actually went to go visit him in South Carolina and uh, we went to go visit my great aunt and uncle and they, they're fairly close in age with my dad they all went to high school together and um, of course my dad was younger mm. and uh, my great aunt she was like you know what, I, you know, with all the traveling your dad did, he, he never let y'all out of his sight. And my dad was like, yeah, they're mine. And I was, you know, there was something about that claiming. Right. Right. And I just, I just sat there and I was just like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like this is my daddy. Right. Um, exactly, see daddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then at the same time, she was like, um, he, something to the effect of, she was like, oh yeah, you know, when he was in, he was such a small boy, such a skinny boy, so scrawny and da da da. He was like, that's because I was hungry. <laughs> and she was like, don't say that. And he was like, no, that's the truth. Like, if it wasn't for y'all some of the days, like, I wouldn't have eaten. And it caught her off guard, but then it also caught me off guard. Right, right. Not realizing the kind of poverty that my um, parents grew up in. Um, generations back, and even um, my great aunt and my great uncle—I mean, they grew up in poverty too—but they also made they made a way. 
And Amen. so to see where my dad has come and to help create this life that I'm currently living, absolutely amazing. Amen. And so I owe him all of it. And so like the life that I live, the life that I choose to live is because of him. And just like you were saying, you know, wanting to make my dad proud, I want to make both of my parents proud. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I don't find excuses for anything. And so if they were able to give us a lot with a little, um, and sometimes it was a little, and, and they shielded it from us. Um, if they were able to do it, then I can do it. Right. That's, that's, my, that's my philosophy, that's my mentality. Um, and so my dad has been a great example. My dad is still a great example. Um, and like, I can't, I can't wait to see him this week. Like, that's amazing. So, yeah. so when you talk about losing a parent, mm -hmm. just to be in a space to still, still be able to see my, my dad and my mom, um, that's such a huge blessing to me. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I think a lot of people take it for granted because you just think you have the time, Right. you know, Ugh. you just think you have the time. So. And my parents older. Let's move on. Yeah, How you. about you, your father? <laughs> well, as y'all know, I don't have a relationship with my father, um, my actual father. And, um, you know, with that being said, it's just like I have um, I have father figures. I would just say that. Like, I have people who have definitely taken on the road to, like, you know, help me grow as a man. Like, I'm not going to lie. That's this one man, like, when I met him, didn't know him from Adam to Eve, and you know he knew my um, he knew my grandma, and when my grandma passed away, I guess they had some kind of conversation or something, and you know when she passed away, he reached out to me and he was like, you know, I talked to your grandma before she passed away, and I promised her that I was gonna make sure that I looked out for you and I made sure that you was okay, and like from that point on, <coughs> like, this man has literally like took on a role like as my father. When I say you know, calls me every day, checks on me. If I ever need anything, he's there. Like, I, it's like the things that I've always wanted in a father, like, I get that from him. And even though he's not my father, it's like he treats me just like one of his kids. And um, I'm truly grateful for that because, you know, I, you know, I've longed for a relationship with my father for a long time. And then I just felt like eventually I just wasn't going to get it. So mm -hmm. I was just like, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, my mom for a long time took on a role as my father. She, you know, she raised me by herself. Um, so she showed me, you know, as much as she could when it comes to, you know, being a man and stuff. So when this guy came into my life, you know, I'm already grown an adult. So it's just like, you know, it's not really much he can teach me now. But at the same time, he's that father figure support that, you know, I'm definitely grateful for because I, I never had that. And um, like I say, he he. That is my dad. I call I call him dad at this yeah, point. I like, mentioned it because I feel like we talked about you know our natural biological. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's a lot of people who have father figures. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Yeah, he stepped he definitely. Up. He stepped. Yeah, like this man, like literally stepped up and just took on the role of my father. And like I said, it doesn't matter what it is. If I need something, he is there. Like when I got super sick or whatever, that man paid my rent for me, like and everything. And is he still paying rent? <laughs> Girl, let's go. He all got to ruin shit. Right, so first of all, you just told this man you were gonna send him a dick pic. Exactly, <laughs> not a piss dick for the, for no, the, for the people that are just. No, wait, no, cheer him up. Cheer him up. He that said would you cheer wanted up. twelve inches in black, mm -hmm. like your coffee. I'm not taking no twelve inches, but <laughs> you can send me a twelve inch. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think production is telling us. It's time for the next step. Yeah. So, so since we so since we are talking about fathers and we do have Father's Day growing up, what is it like for you as a black gay male? Do you do you want kids? Do you want to be a parent? Um, I remember having a conversation with my mom when I was 16, 17, and she asked me um, if I wanted to get married and, you know, have kids. And my first response was, I've always thought of myself as a single parent. And by that time, my parents had already been divorced. Okay. And so she looked at me, she was like, we really fucked y'all up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, but like, I, I just see myself as being a, a single parent. But of course, you know, this is also me being younger, not coming out, right, right. and not even visualizing what a, a partnership would look like. Right, or knowing that it's possible. Or knowing so, that right, it's possible. Yeah. 
And so um, now that I'm older, I, I, I want kids. Yeah. Like, I think that's a part of my story that I want. How many? Two at the most. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. I definitely want kids as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always wanted kids, though. I wanted four kids at first. But the older I got and the more nieces and nephews I have, I'm like, okay. I'd like two kids. It's fine. So I, in a perfect world, when I get married, my husband would have a kid, and I would have a kid also with the same woman. Like, we would both mm. use the same surrogate mm-hmm. um, in a perfect world. Um, but I've talked about other things. Like, I have a best friend um, who's a lesbian, so we talked about, like, you know, having a kid together. Um, so, of course, we would get, like, legal, you know, documents and all that in place. Um, but I, I want to be a dad. I definitely want to have a girl, though, only because I don't want to have to change a lot of who I am for my son. And I just... I you know think that you would have to? Yeah. I, don't I feel like, I feel like there are certain things because I just don't want... I don't want him to be, like, groomed into a lifestyle. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I like if, if he's gay, that's fine. Like, I would prefer my kids not be gay. But if he's gay, that's fine. You know, whatever. Really? But I, but I just not? Like, because I feel like there's so much that you go through as a gay person. I feel like even though it's 2022, it's 2022, <laughs> there's still, like, a lot of opposition. And there's still a lot of just, like, extra stuff. Like, even when I have on short shorts at times and, like, older guys give me looks, like, what are you doing wearing that? You know what I mean? And I'm comfortable, so I'm going to do me, and I'm fine. But if I could protect my kids from going through that, you know what I mean? I feel like it's just, I would rather, like, I just want them to be okay. And I know they're going to face opposition, like, because that's life. But I feel like that's another layer of complication in addition to them being black, in addition to, you know what I mean? I like, said it's straight people talking from experience don't do shit to I know, that's why I said yeah, they'll face opposition straight. regardless, <laughs> but this is another layer. So if I had my Trump, preference, I would Trump prefer them a thing. not be <laughs> gay. So, you know, my daughter, we can go get our nails done. We could play dress up. I could do her hair. I'm really good at doing hair. So, well, kids' hair. Um, so, yeah, that would be fun. And I want, I feel like my husband's going to be more masculine. So I want him to have the boy, even though we'll obviously live together. But I feel like if you're masculine and that's your son, like, you know, like, It'll just be like I don't know. I just want to be. I want there to be balance, you know. And I feel like it'd be easier for me with the girl. So you want masculine energy and feminine energy? Yeah, I think both is important. Okay. Um, but I just again, I want my son. I don't want him to be just like me. Yeah, I wouldn't want him to be just like me. We'll come back to that later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In uh, a sense of you know. <laughs> Tay, what about you? I definitely want kids. Um, Actually, working on that in about four years, we'll be having kids. We want a boy and a girl. We got names picked out and everything. <laughs> we already got names picked out and everything. Um, so we're probably going to, um, we actually had a conversation with um, my sister Zari about caring them for us. Because she's, um, you know, she's from Italy and got good hair. So, you know. Good hair. Don't say good hair on camera. We're going to get um, no, hate that's, mail. <laughs> that's his preference. That's we need to learn it. Like, like, what's good hair? What you no, mean by like, good and hair? And her daughter's already, she has a daughter, and her daughter's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like, so we actually had discussed that as well. And we have some adoptions. Um, but we definitely do want kids. I've actually almost been a daddy, so. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I got to go pregnant back in high school. Oh, you were slanging. Huh? Is that the same one you ate out? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you were slinging that dick. But right. yeah, I got to go pregnant in high school. Um, was actually a really good friend of mine. Um, was prepared to be a dad and everything, but, you know. But you said you were kids. prepared to be a dad? I was prepared, yeah, but God just had other plans. Like, he's like, yeah, you're not. My, maybe he felt like I was. So she had a miscarriage? Yeah, she had a miscarriage. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but, you know, I mean. I was excited. I was yeah. like, oh my God, I'm about to be a dad. Like, you know, I have someone that I can literally consider mine that's going to love me unconditionally. Oh. Like, if I knew no one else was going to love me, my child was going to love me unconditionally. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it just wasn't the right timing, which is, you know, that's okay because, you know, the time is coming. Yeah. So <laughs> now will you and your best friend actually have sex or will y'all do, like, you know, what is it called? Artificial oh, no, insemination? I'm not. Yeah, okay. I'm not having sex with a no female child. We're not discussing <laughs> I thought that's so, but idea. I just had to, you know. People ask me all the time, they so are you going to? No, vagina. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Like, because the, the reason that the girl that actually did get pregnant with her child, we were so drunk, I didn't even remember it happened or nothing. Oh, I ain't going to lie to y'all. <laughs> like, at all. Because. Oh. <laughs> was it just the two of you? We were slinging. 
Yeah, it was just a. What do you mean? I, like, was I, it a threesome? Thank you. I'm just want to know if other people were there. <laughs> from what I, from what I remember, it was two of us. <laughs> but you don't remember a lot, so I really don't remember a lot. There, Trust me, yeah. when she came to me, I was a girl. I was like, "Girl, you lying?" Like, oh, there's no way. Like, <laughs> that is crazy. In high the plot school. thickens. But right. tea. <laughs> Let me wipe this tear. It's just gonna fall for like uh, Wendy Williams. Let me get it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Wendy, we love you. Sorry, these shows going away, love. I know. I miss yeah. her. But, she's um, okay. Yeah, me too. I really do. Um, I do want kids, but I have to think of the <laughs> reality of having children. Um, things are expensive now, I'm, and I'm just going to keep it A100. What I don't want to be, and it'll knock to them, I don't be on Section 8 on food stamps trying to, because for one, it's not the child's fault you in poverty. This is how I feel. Right. So if I'm not financially stable, I would not. I would prefer God not give me that. Right. But, you know, some people say you can be financially stable making what I'm making and, you know, have to. I don't see it. I don't see how I can. Sometimes I'm like, girl, I want to spend this. And if I have this amount of much, three three kids and a school come around, what the fuck you going to do? Right, right, like, right. clothes are expensive. Rent is, rent is like $2,000. Yeah. Like. It's like I, when I think about my grandparents, my grandparents, I come from people being married. I say a perfect marriage, just but they were married. Right, right. right. And think about how my great grandma to pay twenty five dollars a month for her house. That is then crazy. my grandparents paid know, right? like one eighty to three twenty a month. Mom done pay like six eighty or like nine hundred. Right. Now mortgage is like two three thousand right, dollars. Right, right. You know, but the but the pay ain't going up like exactly. That, right? <laughs> like my great grandma showed me a thing of she used to have a store and like hamburgers. Fries and drink was ten cents. That is ridiculous. Can you imagine, like, if prices were? Can you? Do, you were? know what I'm saying? Look. Ten cent inflation yeah. has went up a motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you think about how the times is, I guess it was easier to have like eight, nine kids back in the day because shit went so damn expensive. Right. You had a dollar, you could feed ten kids. Right. But you know what I'm talking about? And then you have to think about college and like them driving. It's a lot to think about. I think. Fortunately for us, we still have time to, like, you know, reach that level of, you know, finance that we want to. So that hopefully, you know, we'll be able to, you know, have kids, do what we need to do for our kids. Yeah, but I would like to. I don't care what they are as long as my thing, as long as they're healthy. That's it. That's all I pray. God, let them be healthy. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are some of your fears when it comes to, because we started with Devin talking about some of his fears mm -hmm. about having kids. So... We can yeah so my fear is and I just want to clarify my statement when I said I don't want my son to be just like me if he is that's fine but I would just prefer him to be his own person without watching everything I do and then emulating that you know what I mean like be the type of person I am yes be well spoken like let I me kill yes, that let me kill that bill for you real quick but you had a mom and dad right mm -hmm. well wait were your dad I don't know when yeah okay yeah, they were so was your daddy wearing clothes like this Mm -mm. Exactly. No. That's my point. You're right. That's a good point. I, didn't, I never <laughs> thought about it that way. That's a good point. I think I think so. Now that you say that, I think that it just goes to the fear part. Like yeah. I like I want them to be comfortable, but I don't want to be a reason for something. You know, like I don't want to be a reason for pushing you in a certain direction. I think that's my fear. Um, that and then also just like people knowing that my kids have two dads like how are they going to be treated at school and again it's 2022 so it's more common than whatever but it's still kids are assholes like kids are assholes it's fine because we're gonna fight and that's and i don't want to be locked up and i know i would be like my kids do not play with me i'm gonna like do not both of them say go beat who wishes the bitch and said something about my goddamn kids because you probably more than your both your broke ass straight ass parents right not broke straight bitch let's just go there Bitch, so which one, Timmy? Beat that bitch ass. <laughs> and if somebody jump in, you beat that bitch ass. And call your daddy out. <laughs> Cause I'm beating everybody in. I beat teach ass took a bitch. You let this happen, bitch. Right. You let my kids get. <laughs> bitch. Right, who's uh, next? They gonna kick me out of school. For me, my fear is this, and it's my truth. My fear, if I have to adopt, um, make a long story short. We're about going a long story. We just found out a cousin, my first cousin, my auntie, who was married to my uncle, gave up a daughter. Oh, wow. Mm. She was 43 years old. We did not know about her until 43 years later. She knew she was adopted, so she found some papers that her dad, I think he knew he was dying, so he just wanted right. to know the truth. Right. And whatever. 
So she found us. We love her, you know, like, but we love her. However, for me, if I raise a baby from six weeks old, even they could be one, and all they know is me, and then somebody, I will never tell you, I'm sorry, this is my truth, and if somebody in my family go tell them they leave me to go give, talk to somebody who left you, that will kill me. Yeah. That will break my heart. And so I'll be like, damn, like, I, it don't matter what I did for you, right? So I'm not enough, like... I didn't provide. But why would it be a fact of not being enough versus I'm let not me enough. see what you, else If I you want to go see a bitch who gave you up, <laughs> and I'm you know, you know I'm talking to my kids like this. You but you see don't a know bitch her situation. Who gave, I don't give a damn if I don't want to adopt. See, that's what I'm saying. That's my fear. So I would prefer not to adopt. Right. Because right. I'm telling you now, the baby's not going to know. Right. The right. baby better not say shit. The doctor baby gonna be burnt the fuck up. You not gonna hear nothing. Like this is my baby. Like, Look, I, I see, I see him with a wave cap on <laughs> and a house coat <laughs> wrapped up. Talking about if you want to go see a bitch who left, <laughs> right? Exactly. Right. Bitch, get the fuck out my house. He go five hundred dollars, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of times they just want to see what else is out there. Like, what are they missing? What, are they like their other family member, their biological family? Like, and I love yeah. my cousin. I love her. Right. Because it's, it's, she's us. Right. But I don't want you to care. Right. Like, right. I gave you a loving environment. I provided for you. Me and your dad provided for you. I don't be a single parent either. Me and your daddy provided for you. Right. And so if I get married, ain't no divorce, and bitch. We're going to... Oh, that's a good. Out. That's a good topic. We're, not, we're gonna yeah, we work it out, bitch. We go. You can have your sex on the side. Don't get sloppy in front of our kids, ho. And we're gonna be good. So y'all can cheat on each other. If if we're really done, we're staying together <laughs> for our kids. Cause our kids but, are for that. Period. They had hey, two you parents. think with you out fucking and your husband out fucking, Again, your kids would never don't know be sloppy. That. Okay. Don't be sloppy. Okay. And once we eighteen, bitch, we can. Go y'all ways, but from high school, bitch, we're together. I feel like kids know. Mm-hmm. Like kids can tell when parents are not on the same accord. They, they, they can say, "Well, you know what? If my <laughs> daddy say with his dad and my dad, we sure the fuck did." Well, bitch. prayerfully, we won't. <laughs> any none of us will be in that situation. Right. Right. So, but you know. what yeah. about you, Tay? Um, my honestly, my biggest fear um, know, right? with having kids is that just bringing them up into this world and this society like the way things is like are like i'm seeing more kids die now than like adults like it's it's just crazy like you know i have friends who then lost their babies to like just you know gun violence and you know just thinking about things like bringing a child into this world and not being able to just protect them from everything At all like times, it's like right. it's super scary like so i think that's like Literally one of my biggest fears, because if my child died before me, like, I don't know how I will ever get through that. Like, I don't know imagine. either, Lord. I'm like this. <laughs> Lord, take me back. Take me. I couldn't you imagine. You took my baby. I'm like, he cussed his ass out. You motherfucker. <laughs> right. Like, so I, I just, yeah, I, I, and, I, and I think about that, like, you know, because I've, you know, I've witnessed, you know, people who have lost their kids and mm. stuff. And, you know, too. going to funeral, like, just, I'd be like, Lord, like, how are you doing it? Like, yeah. I, I, I watch the baby. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think my fear is, and I really don't want to call it a fear because it's not something that I like focus on, but it's th- it's the same thing. Um, I think the most I get emotional when I think about having a kid is losing them. Right. Oh and, oh, no. um, you know, with all the, the gun violence, there's this animation on Netflix, I believe it's called If Anything Should Happen, I Love You. And so it goes through this whole narr- um, animation, because it's, it's not a narration, but it goes through this whole animation with the parents arguing. And then the kid goes to school. Then there's a text. If anything should happen, I love you. From the mom? No, from the from kid. From the kid. Oh. The, she, uh, the kid texts that to the parents. Oh, my God. And then there was a school shooting. And then the parents reconcile over the loss which is at, like i sat there and i cried like oh i was God. Well, I'm not watching that because i'm a crier that actually oh, happened don't too. let me cry yeah, yeah. that yeah. happened that's to a mom bitch, everybody i promise y'all <laughs> if my child don't die from a disease if my child die from somebody killing them 
Bitch, I'm going to. I would do like. Yeah. Same. Bitch, I'm killing your mom. I don't give a fuck, bitch. Yeah. You took. I'm. I'm so you took my child. Right. So somebody your family will feel some love. If I can't right. get you, I'm getting some. I. Pro- <laughs> if you take me now, this is my proof. <laughs> if somebody kill my baby, I'm going to somebody your family yeah. that I know is gonna hurt you. Yeah. And I'm, I'll be like, bitch, I did it. Take me. You yeah. took my. Yeah. I agree though. <laughs> like, I'm I just so serious. Like how? Like getting a text like that? Like. If y'all remember the shooting that happened at that club in Miami at Pulse, mm-hmm. yeah, and the, the, the son had texted his mom, told him, like, "Mom, I'm about to die." Like, and that was the last text that she got from him, and after that, she kept texting him or whatever. And she said back, and it's just like, how do you, how do you even respond to receiving a text like? like um, <laughs> you I'm cry. Tell, I'm telling you, I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna be most wanted because I'm gonna look up your family. I'm gonna pay for background checks. See where your mama stay, your sister, your daddy. I'm walking. With, look, it's not, it's not you. You just gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call it? Wow. Collateral. Something. Collateral, collateral damage. damage. Collateral yeah, damage. Collateral. No. I, I for I bitch. <laughs> but the Bible said. <laughs> yeah, I, I, two, four, two. But on the flip side, so what are your what are like what are your greatest expectations for being a parent? I go first. I don't have expectations. I think it's selfish to have expectations. Like yeah, I think we re, we revisit we visit this back like our previous episodes. Mm-hmm. Go watch um, <laughs> and subscribe. <laughs> yes, and like a comment. <laughs> but uh, for me, like I said, my little brother, y'all. Well, Lily, when Harry Potter came out, my little brother made a Harry Potter book mm-hmm. with animation and words mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that I wish he would have got published. My father told him, put that shit away. You'll never make money from it. Like, killed my little brother. He was so, and it was so, I even read it. It was so good. Mm-hmm. Like, he would, like, really draw figures, cut them out, and, like, play with paper, like, figures. And they used to be so freaking good right. and for me my expectation would be be who you want to be your father will always be here regardless as long as I got breath in my body right. your daddy gonna be here for you you can go out there and get on drugs bitch as long as you mess with children <laughs> it's only my cut off I'm being for real you don't mess with children but you can do anything else in the world <laughs> you know daddy here for you I'm just being for real like I'm here for you you always come home right. period you can always come home yeah, I would have that. Same. Like, you can always come home. Like, yeah. If you're you know, going through, bitch, you got a house at whatever address home. Right, exactly. <laughs> you got love at home. You got support at home. Like, doors always open when I have kids. What about you? Oh, I forgot the question. <laughs> what are your greatest expectations for uh, being a parent? My greatest expectation for being a parent is just giving somebody, like, or, or more than one, the love that I have to give. Mm. So I feel like I have great parental instincts, um, mainly probably because I'm the oldest, and I, I really feel like my like my siblings, like even though we're all best friends, those are my kids. So like even how we were talking about passing away, like I ask God all the time, like when it is time for somebody to go, please take me first, because I could not, like I, I just couldn't do it. Like I couldn't deal with that. Um, so just giving love, like I feel like I'm a good teacher. Um, I just have a lot of love, wisdom, and guidance to offer that I give my students on a daily and even giving it to them and seeing how they receive it and how they apply like different things I tell them it makes me so proud to know that I'm making a difference so I can't wait for it to be like my kids that I'm making a difference in, and not somebody else's that's a quick, mm-hmm. quick question because you talk about siblings mm-hmm. you know I realize that me and my siblings are getting older mm-hmm. right and that's one of my biggest fears too is for me to lose a sibling. Yeah, I could not. I cannot imagine not seeing my annoying ass little brother, mm-hmm. my crazy one above me, the one to get on my fucking nerves above <laughs> him, and my sister who I love dearly. She's my favorite. So I didn't know. So it's five of y'all? It's six. Yeah, it's all six, together six of us. I didn't know that. It's two boys and four girls, and I cannot imagine losing. We can cuss each other out. Mm-hmm. Like it's a cooler brown coochie. <laughs> but if they die. I'll ask what that means later. But. Yeah, that's Mississippi <laughs> term. Mississippi term. Okay. But if they die, they will, that will break my heart. And that's one thing I saw my grandmother go through. Like as she got older, even though know, it was in her 70s or 80s, when she lost her sister. Mm-hmm. My whole grand, her whole, like they raised mm. kids together, right. went to prom together, fought bitch beaches up together, right. <laughs> like. And when she lost her sister, she just, she already lost my grandfather. When she lost her sister, she just. Yeah. Mm. But I love y'all, bitches. Yeah, I love y'all, siblings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think my biggest invitation to being a father is definitely 
being the father that I was deprived of. Oh, oh that's beautiful. Oh yeah, my God. like I would definitely make sure that I'm there to support mine. And, you know, just go above and beyond because, you know, at the end of the day, I want my child to have that love, that all the love that they need. Because I don't want them to have to go out and look for it elsewhere. Hell you no. get it right mm-hmm. here at home, you know. Yeah. So that's definitely my biggest thing. Like, I always say when I become a father, I will definitely be the father that I've always wanted to be. Right. Quick question again. I don't know what this came mm-hmm. in my head. Um, <laughs> you know how some people say, like, you have money and you can mm-hmm. afford to buy your kids stuff. Will you deprive your kids of being a saying, like, they need to work for what they want or will you give it to them? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go because I um, I know the answer to that. I want my kids to learn responsibility, but you can literally have whatever you want. But you're also gonna get in there and vacuum a floor. Your room's mm-hmm. gonna be clean. You better be making an honor roll. Like there's gonna be ex- so when we talk about expectations, those are gonna oh, yeah, be the yeah, norms. Yeah, so as long as like you're following the norms, then yeah, you can have whatever you want. And I but I still wanna again instill. You know, make sure that when you get a certain age, you're getting a job, you get your license. So, like, instill to where you're not going to lean on me and feel like you don't have to build your own life. But I got anything, everything I wanted. So I want my kids to have everything they want to. I agree. I, I, I feel like I'll give it to them if they earn it. Okay, you want those. Yeah. And it's not wrong with so just fo- my by sister following is the norms, like, like, good in school and, like, house chores and, like. Well, um. Like, what do you mm, mean earn it? So, I, you know, I think I don't want to put good in school as one of those categories because Mm -hmm. you know some people have deficits um but like if you have like if you're doing your chores if you're doing um everything that is expected or the standard of the house then yeah absolutely for me um it's a yes i me and my sister is about this all the time like they're doing very well like Mm -hmm. they're doing well and i'm just like in a day like give your kids if they want a car bitch you got the money it's talking about well, black folks need to learn. That's the issue. Exactly. They talking about it's talking about white folks. They can they can they can do it. They don't stop. Right. They can make me and daughter daughter got a Rolls Royce, bitch. Exactly. And with no questions asked. Like, if I want my kid a little lifestyle, bitch, what you want? Yeah, my kids are definitely. I got luxury it. If cars. I got it, bitch, you can have it. And I think it's giving like okay, I'm gonna buy you a luxury car, but I also want you to get a job after school oh, if that doesn't working? interfere with sports, yeah. and then you can keep gas in your car. You know what I mean? Like just still like I again. want my child to be a child. I don't even exactly. want them to work. I want you. Like, you can work in college. I want you to enjoy being a child. You can be a child and work at the ice cream stand or something. Yeah, that's true. Like, you can do weekends at Rita's or something. Like, I think that's still being a child, Mm -hmm. but just mild responsibility. I was working since I was 14. I've been working since I was 14. So, and I still had a good life at 14 when I was working. So, I think for me, my greatest expectation is that I introduce the child to my life. Like I don't want to sacrifice my life and give up and give up a lot of like I don't want to give up traveling. Like I will bring I want to be able to afford well I will afford um, to have a child to travel with a child to introduce them to the things that I want to do. And so when they're older, they can decide if they want to continue doing that. Right, right. But I think that would be my greatest expectation. What you say? Yeah, um, I definitely will reward good behavior. just, you know, like I said, I grew up with my mom, a single parent. So, you know, with her, like, she did everything she could for us, you know, but at the same time, she did teach us to be independent. So, like I said, I got a job when I was 14 as well, just to kind of take the loads off of her. You know, I took care, you know, I bought my own shoes, school clothes, stuff like that, because she had three other kids, right. you know, to mm. provide for. So, you know, that's how I grew up. And, like, I want my kids to be able to, you know, you know, if I have it, of course, I'll make sure to have it. But, you know, if, you know, we have our issues or whatever, like, hey, you got to be able to go out there and get it too. It's right, true. Right. And I don't even want my kids to, like, have somebody like their dad, right? Mm. I'm somebody going to teach you right. right. Fuck money. You mm. have, and I want somebody. You better treat my daughter, my son, right. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Don't tell me I have issues. I'm going to hate that nigga forever. Yeah, and don't tolerate. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want my kids to tolerate anything they don't deserve. Exactly. Know your mm-hmm. worth. You know, set boundaries. And, you know, I, it's it's – natural it's normal that you know you go through breakups and stuff so you know they'll get hurt but i want them to know their worth and really like not settle for anything i hope they don't get Absolutely. abused that's one of my biggest fears yeah. don't let nobody beat my child and i don't want my child to be the abuser either right because that's just as bad it's just, it's as, just bad. as bad yeah okay no, no bad, eh? all right we're at productions <laughs> telling us hello open relationship podcast so i'm gonna again, sis. I was, can you, you've been on my ass the whole show. Give me a minute. <laughs> Calm down. So this is the segment of our show where we're reading a letter from people that have viewed the show. Uh, maybe it's their first time, second time, but they write into us and we call this section or we call this segment left on red. 
So this letter reads, Hello, Open Relationship Podcast. I have a male best friend who I have fallen in love with. He says he isn't gay, but I know for a fact he is. I just know <coughs> it. The way he treats me, the way he looks out for me, flirts with me at times. I really want to tell him, but I'm afraid our friendship I'm afraid our friendship wouldn't be the same if he doesn't share the same feelings. Mm. Our friendship and bond is out of this world, and there's so much chemistry. Even if I don't say anything, it's just awkward being in love with someone and not being able to do anything about it. We're perfect for each other, exclamation marks. You know he's serious. What should I do? What would you do? You know, make it quick, y'all. <laughs> I would say this. You know, I watch friends who are, like, acting like they're my potential boo boyfriend because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you just, you this person. Yeah. Right, you right. settled for a friendship. Right, right. He don't want you. He can really don't want you, but you... Right. Want him, right? And right. I couldn't compete with that. Yeah, because well, I'm not gonna ruin your friendship. When I I have turned that relationship because of that situation. Yeah. When it comes to that, I would say, it's stupid to hurt yourself. Right. It's stupid to wake up every morning loving someone, and you know deep down inside they cannot love you. I don't even care if he's straight or gay. There's knowing that they can't even love you back the later you love them. Why are you doing that? So you don't think it's worth a conversation to see have if he it. loves him back? You can, but if it's not what you want. I don't want you being like not trying to find suicidal and shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's life. People are not gonna want. People tell me no. You know I, I'd be so confused about it. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, and I have told people no. Like it's right. okay. I want and again for government kids, I want kids to know no, it's okay. Right. No, it's not the end of the. And it's not really world. rejection. Like and right. I think that's like a lot of people don't like rejection. So sometimes no is like oh well, what's wrong with me and this and not that I hear no often, but. You know. I hear no, it's okay, hurt my feelings, but you know, I'm a big bitch and I'll you know, <laughs> the next. Pop my shit, bitch. Oh, uh, Solomon, what about you? <laughs> I would say love yourself first. <coughs> there's Do you want to? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm there's this line in here. He says he isn't gay, but I know for a fact he is. <laughs> The fuck? Okay. <laughs> like you gonna make him gay because you want him gay. <laughs> basically, basically, you're basically he's saying you're not it. But you're still going after him, right? Okay. He's he's saying no, I don't want you, right? You you may have whatever evidence that you have about this person, and you you just have a friendship. Move on. Yeah. Tay. Um. So I definitely agree. Um, I will say this though: if y'all have that kind of friendship, that y'all have that bond. And I feel like if you are able to, you know, express that to him, how you feel, whether he receives it or not, I feel like if y'all had that kind of friendship, it wouldn't change the dynamic of your friendship. He's just like, okay, well, yeah, I'm really not into that. Right. But, I mean, if you care about your friendship that much, then, I mean, you got to be honest with him and yourself, honestly. Some people are crazy. I'm, I mean, for some people, you could just be nice, and they be like, oh, he fucking loves me. Like, right. you have psychotic, like, people like that. Like, psychotic. But you also have those friends, because I have friends, like, I've had I've friends. Had I was going to let it go. <laughs> you also have friends that, but you also do have friends, because I've had friends like that in the past where, you know, they portrayed the straight role, like, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, behind closed doors, they was a little extra touchy feely right, or right. whatever. And, you See, know, that's like, a difference. And, uh, but I but that's, like that's what, what he's, he's saying. saying Is he touching on him, though? He didn't specify that. No, I'm just saying he's like he. He might be touching on other boys. Right, right, right. Okay. He just ain't you, sis. Can you call us? Cause we need. <laughs> <laughs> we need more. <laughs> we need more detail. <laughs> really don't. <laughs> this boy don't want you. He don't. Thank I feel you. like I feel like it could be a situation where. Um, Speaker the, of the, the hamster, can you speak into the mic? The guy is. Do I need to? <laughs> the guy is. Hold it like this. Why? Uh-huh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and I was about to do it too. No. Um, it could be a situation where the guy is gay. Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. I think that it's worth a conversation. I think that again, if y'all are best friends and your your best friend is truly comfortable with your sexuality, comfortable mm-hmm. with you being gay, um, I think that he wouldn't. It wouldn't scare him off to say right. how you feel. But just be prepared to to notice. Like maybe he may feel like, okay, well, I can't kick it with you like I used to. Like you never know. So right, it's right, like right. if you're gonna do that, just be prepared for the consequences and question. how the relationship may change. So you know, this is me thinking. The guy is not giving you any, in this letter, correct, because I'm wrong, write a new one. The guy is not giving you any inclination, inclination that he wants you. This is all coming from your head. Well, 
we don't know. In my, but from the letter, from the it's coming letter. from his head. But if if you're saying the way he treats me, the way he looks out for he me. He might just be me. that type of person. My thing is, you know when somebody likes you. You know when somebody likes you. But he ain't returning you. it, though. Yes, you do. You mm-hmm. know when somebody likes you. He's li- not well, returning I always it. know when somebody likes but you. But is he re- if he was returning, we wouldn't have this letter. No, he doesn't. I don't know. This isn't my situation. I gave my advice. You have your opinion, and that's fine. That <laughs> but I said what I defensive. said. I said what I said. I think that he should try it. But again, you're taking the risk of your friendship may being different. That was I my. I just cut it off all together. That my. That was my advice. Why can't friendship be enough? Exactly. No, that'd be not, a good topic. Not if you want to. If you if you have intimate feelings for someone, then you need more than friendship. Who like, who who you said you you is singular. It's not if plural. two people have mutual feelings for each other, now you re- but, we, <laughs> but we don't know if they we have. Don't mut- know if and he, he even said, "I don't know if he feels the same Sometimes way." So saying. why is friendship enough if you're in love? Like if you're in love with somebody, not until you want to fuck. Them it's too. killing so him. So it's like you want to fuck your best friend. dying like, inside. Buddy. Exactly. That's why he needs to say something. <laughs> no, you don't. You need to. Just I would suck I it would. up. I would, but I would, t- I would take the risk. But I'm bold. Like I feel like if Did if I really, bad, he gone? if I really love somebody <laughs> or I think it's worth it, I would definitely take take the chance. Like but, I've even approached like guys who weren't out, and it's like, oh no, you're gay, but you're not really out. But I'm gonna try you anyway because I thought different. it's worth it. You that's know? different because you don't know them. But this is like some, this, this is a genuine that you know. friendship. Yeah, and you're flirting with me. And, and I think he did say, say any. Out. He did say flirt. Read the screen. Look out, first with me. He probably doesn't know you gay trying to make you feel good. <laughs> and, you know, isn't, there's already this misconception that gay men date their friends. Yeah. And then they, or they... I try to turn their friends out. Or they... Yeah. they That's why I'm fucking them. What is, they, they fuck the friends or whatever it is. And, like, it, it's just muddy. Just... Don't say muddy when you say sex, fucking friends, because I think of, like... I'm going to say this. Like, if what, my boy yes. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> had sex with his friends and I find out, I'm leaving. Because I don't Wait, want you around what? anyone <laughs> that you had sex with, period. That's not your friend. Could be, it could be weak moments. I don't give a fuck. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. Don't be yeah. telling me, oh, that's my homeboy. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, y'all don't that's fuck. That's absolutely no, no. Well, y'all, y'all, know, y'all, me, y'all, like, y'all know my team, my story, but the whole best friend thing. Uh, Girl, yeah. <laughs> Close out of it. <laughs> Go ahead. Close out of it. Look. Well, that is, <laughs> <laughs> that is it for us. Thank you for coming and joining the four of us as we swallow hard topics and spit difference of opinions. Bye, guys. See, See y'all next week. <laughs>